Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. Today we're checking out why British TV is better than American TV. Those are strong words. Brits just do it better. They should shit off okay. the pub. For once, Trevor, you speak the bloody truth. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be discussing why British TV is better than American TV. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. British television may not always receive the same level of worldwide recognition that American telly enjoys, but just because it isn't as well known doesn't mean it isn't great. Okay. In terms of specific types of shows that Britain particularly excels at, panel shows are a prime example. There's a weird man at the back who is determinedly walking towards a door that isn't there. <laughs> Panel shows are a virtual unknown commodity in the US nowadays. Yeah, yes, we don't really have that. it's a format that has been popular stateside in the past, but they're thin on the ground now. That's true. We've had, like, um, the, um, what you call that, Hollywood Squares and Password, a few game shows, but those are pretty old. I don't think that's very popular here anymore. But if you get a good improviser, good comedian on one of these panel shows, I mean, that's great television for sure. And they're usually very focused on actually competing for points. Meanwhile, here in the UK, the points are but a means to an end. The real reason for these shows is comedy, comedy, jokes, comedy, and satire. What else emerged this week that could make Trump's meeting with Prince Charles a bit tense? Oh, oh he wants Jack Camilla. <laughs> <laughs> the likes of 8 out of 10 cats, Mock the Week, and especially QI are all about the interactions between the panellists themselves and the more outrageous the better. What comes from Glasgow and glows in the dark? Is it Sir Alex Ferguson's nose? <laughs> the spontaneous repartee and clever answers all add up to a stream of shows we'd happily watch on Dave on repeats basically forever. So British comedy beats American comedy. Tell us something we don't know. Okay, yeah. all right. And let's be honest, it isn't only the panel shows either, but it isn't just being funny that the UK has a knack for. Because boy, do we know good daytime telly when we see it. While hmm. there are various similarities between both sides of the Atlantic on this one, and in some cases UK shows have even been modeled on US predecessors, it's all about the variety with British audiences. That result is the cat's whiskers. While US networks offer talk shows and talk shows and talk shows, yeah. Britain can binge on a smorgasbord of program types, with game shows, home, garden and cookery shows, hmm. and whole episodes of afternoon entertainment centered on the how, why and where of buying and selling antiques. Let's go bargain hunting! As much as we love Ellen DeGeneres, you just can't be a bit of bargain hunt. Seems like most American daytime TV is talk shows, and when I was a kid there were a lot of game shows. Next, let's talk soaps. If it's high-tension melodrama you're after, then it's primetime viewing in these parts. I don't employ blokes who terrorize women. Hey, you were right. hey. While the humble soap has fallen by the wayside in America, nudged yeah. out in favor of an ever-lengthening list of CSI and law and order types, not only yes. are the likes of Corey and EastEnders still popular in Britain, but they're also better executed. So you want me to stay in here? You need to do your punishment, Bobby. Yes, the storylines are absurd, and the characters are outrageous. And all of those characters seem to spend all of their time in the pub. <laughs> I will say, British actors are usually really good. Something about the way they're trained, the emphasis on dialogue and how the character comes through the dialogue, as opposed to the American version of creating a character from nothing, using the dialogue as like a secondary thing. I think there's also an emphasis on Shakespeare training in England that there's a little bit of here in America, but not nearly as much. I could definitely see how just having better actors on TV gives the British a leg up. <laughs> but would you have it any other way? Given that these shows are often praised for shining light on real-world issues too, they're basically etched into general British culture. So please, 
consider yourself very lucky. But it's not just the actual shows that are better in Britain, it's also what's between them. <laughs> Although advertising is a necessary annoyance to fun television in general, the Americans seem to go a little overboard. US telly is dominated by advertising, with nearly every program being specifically structured around commercial breaks. Very I can true. finally get back to tending my garden. <laughs> I can finally fight my wife's new husband, Danny Crow. <laughs> well, though it's true we still have to... If you've not seen I Think You Should Leave, it's one of the funniest shows ever made. It's consistently wonderful. Tim Robinson is a genius. Meanwhile, though it's true we still have to endure the ads in the UK, they're not nearly as frequent or as lengthy and, if you're watching the BBC, then mid-show ads don't actually exist. And even when the adverts are on, some of them are bloody brilliant anyway. Hi, I'm Derek Bum. Say goodbye to daily stains and dirty surfaces with new kitchen gun. Fewer ads <laughs> often brings other benefits as well. In theory, less <laughs> emphasis on advertising That's breeds dark. less censorship, or at least fewer outside influences, which leaves British creators with more freedom on what kind of stories they want to tell. That's very cool. Less censorship. Yeah. I feel like in America... If you just hint at something that makes people uncomfortable, you're going to get a lot of backlash and maybe cancelled. On what kind of stories they want to tell and how they tell them. Okay. It's often said that scripted telly feels much less concerned with appealing to the masses in the UK, or with displaying mm. content that advertisers or censors will find acceptable. Would you all please just f out of my office? <laughs> and so, our schedules are usually laden with indie dramas, cutting-edge comedies, more subtle documentaries, and niche offerings. You just need to know where to look. That makes I sense. Do that look. I do that look. When you find those indie shows, though, don't expect them to be on the air for ages, outstaying their welcome and generally overdoing it. Well, go on then, if you've got the bollocks. Good British shows know when to stop. That's a great point, yeah. Our advertisers have a huge influence on what you can show on TV. If a sponsor is paying for ads on a TV show, then they don't want the content of the TV show to make their product look bad, which is kind of messed up. It's kind of backwards, right? Like, don't advertise on that show if you don't like that show. Right? This is starting to make sense. When I first started watching this video, I was like, okay, whatever. But now <laughs> it's making sense. I'm, I'm convinced. Damn it. In the States, a short run of episodes usually means that the network has pulled the plug on a series. Right. In the UK, it usually means that you're left wanting more and loving the show because of that. The Office, Fleabag, Faulty Towers, they all came, we watched them, we liked them, and they left. Perfect pacing, on-point character development, and no filler. Interesting. Yeah, in America, if a TV show's doing great and making money, there's no reason to stop. Let's keep doing it. Bring it in. Turn it into a factory. Thank you, Henry Ford. America, take note. While there's <laughs> no need or, in fact, basis to label all American TV writing as lackluster, it clearly isn't, we Brits are proud of the quality content that our relatively small population produces you year should be. on year, you and should with be. good reason. Yeah. So you are not to be rid of me, my love. So I am not to be rid of you, my love. It's all linked with a very British thirst for realism. While UK schedules aren't totally averse to sensationalism, a half hour in Albert Square promptly proves that we're less capes and crusaders and more biscuits and boredom. You come near me again and I will punch you in the face. Me and you, we ain't family no more. That's not to say that British shows are boring, rather that they turn actual everyday life into something that's entertaining. The dialogue sounds like something real people would say. The characters are recognizably flawed. The storylines are something that could happen to you. Yeah, I feel like in America we're at a point where like, you can't have certain characters have flaws, which makes it really boring, right? Like they have to be perfect? That's not fun to watch. Characters need flaws. The storylines are something that could happen to you. If you're going to be like this, maybe you should just go. Not after three, you're in danger. No. What, do you think they'll try it again? 
But I don't know, do Even with the more outlandish British shows, did someone say Doctor Who? There's a focus on finding the real in amongst the weird. And while there definitely are American examples of this, it's a British specialty. There's more. The result? You could say that British telly prompts more introspection and self-awareness. Uh. It's subtler. You'll watch it, and then you'll find yourself randomly thinking about it in a week's time. The big, bold, brash, and even bigger budgets of American entertainment clearly has its place. But there's something to be said for stories that make you think, question, and wonder yes. what the heck life's all about. Why would you watch something that doesn't do that, right? Just to turn your brain off, I guess, but that's boring. It's not fun. Short term. As well, and Britain's got that down to a T. Give my regards to Mrs. Thursday. And that's why we believe that British telly is better than American TV. What do you think? Do you agree or disagree? And I'm sorry to say that I agree. I was prepared to disagree, but I agree. British TV is better than American TV. I'm sorry to say, I admit it. Lately, the quality of streaming shows has gone down because they're trying to make more and more of it, so they prioritize quantity over quality. And that's the American way for now, I guess. Really eye-opening video. Thank you guys for recommending. It makes me sad, but hopefully we can turn things around in America. Get our TV back on point. If you have any other recommendations, let me know in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Later.